Welcome to a new series of On Two Wheels. We've got some great stuff planned for you in this series, including this little beauty here, the Royal Enfield Bullet. We're going to be doing a review on this. But Corey? This series, I'll be reviewing the Triumphs, Ducatis and BMWs, and a few more surprises in between. You've got to keep watching. Sounds like you're going to have an exciting time this year. You're also going to be working, Corey's also going to be working with Nikki. Welcome back to On Two Wheels, Nikki. Nikki Shehow will be uh, doing our motocross reviews with Corey. So there's going, to be, there's going to be some excitement there. Those two are motocross machines. It's going to be fun. But now it's time to visit the Perth Motorcycle and Scooter Show. We've got a rather special guest here with me at the moment. His name's Matthias. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hey, I good. Thanks. Pretty good. Yeah. Now, you've got this uh, rather wonderful motorcycle. You are going around Australia as well as the world on this motorcycle. Yeah, I left like four years ago home. And like with the stops and works, like three years riding around. You're doing it just for the love of motorcycling. Exactly. That was a dream of mine when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like 14 years old. I had my first motorcycle. It was a 49cc two-stroke bike. Yep. And so I, with friends, we went off summer holidays and crossed Switzerland, the Alps to the Italian part of Switzerland. Yeah. And that's the big trip over there, you know? Yeah. That was our, our big trip. Big thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it's 300Ks. So but you, you do that in a, in a couple of days, you know? And then on the road back home, I thought about once in life, if I get the chance, I'm going to do it. You also, you go to Peru a little bit, I believe, and, and help run a motorcycle trip in Peru where they go up to Machu Picchu and all that sort of thing? Exactly, yeah. So I went backpacking in South America. After a couple months, I changed my motorcycle, my backpack into a motorcycle. I get a motorcycle down there, a Yamaha XT600 Tenere in those days, 1993. And I had no really gear with me. I had only backpacking gears and no spare parts, nothing. But I met a guy that did already a big trip from the States down South America and he was on his way back north. Yeah. So I joined him and he showed me actually how, how to survive on a bike, uh, yeah. two wheels in traveling in remote areas, <laughs> and how to, without insulation maps, I was starting to carry a stack of hay. Yeah. On my back, on my bike, to get have some insulation underneath the tent, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, oh because I had no freaking insulation mattress. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> now look, tell me, you you've obviously you wanted to do adventure riding, so you thought, I oh, know, I'll go out and buy a BMW. Did you? No. Uh, I grew up with motorcycle yeah. as a mechanic, and there was too many warranty work yeah. on the European motorcycles yeah. for many years. So, and then we had also Hondas in the place where I work, and I grew up next to actually, they came out, it's a Honda Trans Yeah. Uh, they came out in 1987 when I started my apprenticeship, right. and we had never problems. And then, like, I did my stuff, traveled all over with single cylinder yeah. bikes yeah. mostly. Yeah. Actually, yeah. And those run out after 50, 100,000 kilometers, depend how you ride them. And then when it came up to do to plan my trip around the world, I checked it out what kind of bike was sure it was going to be a Honda because it's the most trustable bikes for me. And then I was sure I needed a two-cylinder, a V-twin. Yeah. That could be the Africa twin as well. We had the Africa twins That's in right, Europe, yeah, the yeah, 650 yeah, and yeah. the 750s. They are V-twin water-cooled bikes, but uh, they are too heavy. They have a little bit more weight and a little bigger engine, so you need more fuel and it's more weight. That's right. Now, so you went out and bought a brand new bike, did you? No, no. So, you know, on a trip like that, when you go Middle East, Far East, you don't know what's really going to happen, you know? You don't know if you're going to leave your bike or whatever, you yeah. know? So you want to get a cheap bike, a cheap, reliable bike, you know? Yeah, well, a Honda Trans Alp, you must have paid a few grand for it. How much did you pay for it? Uh, well, the bike was already 14 years old when I got it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I bought it in 2005. The bike was yeah. from 1991. So wow. it was 14 years old and it had 55,000 kilometers on. And how many has it got on now? I see it's only got 10,000 on at the moment. I put a two on it now, That's so <laughs> it has really 210,000. 210,000. Yeah. 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 And how much work have you had to do? You had to get the cylinder head off and all that? Uh, well, I do the service by myself, oh, I think. I should think you would, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need two pet bottles, a couple of pet bottles, and do my oil change. Yeah, and uh, no, no major problem, only the clutch. Yeah. It's a little bit small clutch because all the, the weight on it, it's like always two passenger ridings. Right. 
So the clutch I do every 50, 60,000 Ks. So our, our viewers can actually um, keep up with your adventures because you're on, uh, what's it, Global Global Biking. Global Biking. Yeah. Yeah, globalbiking.com so they can keep up with all your okay. adventures. And I believe Honda here in WA are going to look after you and give you some spare parts, I believe. Yeah, it looks like pretty good. Yeah, they're going to help me out. I need a new uh, rear rotor for the disc brakes and oh. get all the spare parts for Africa ready for oh, my next fantastic. and last uh, continent. Well, look, we'll keep up with you. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll sort of keep uh, reporting on how you're doing. And uh, Sweet. I'm going to let you go because I believe you're going to go on stage very shortly as well. Okay. So you're world That's famous good. here in Perth at the moment. Good luck, mate. <laughs> good luck, Matt. Nice Thanks to have met you. Thanks for your support, mate. No problems, mate. Cheers. Yeah. I've come across these caravans built by JK. They're actually a caravan suitable for motorcycles. So um, we're just going to run through a few questions with uh, Nick. Nick, Nick, Corey. Corey, Corey. Good, good. Um, with these caravans, how long are they building these caravans for motorcycles? So they started building them about two years ago, um, and the demand's just been sensational. It was a bit of a hole in the market. People were wanting to buy a standard caravan and just gut it. Yep. And it just doesn't work. It has to be purpose built in the chassis and, and so on. And uh, so we came up with this concept, and ever since we haven't been able to keep up with demand. It's terrific. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's been a shortage of sort of like motorcycle trailers out there in general. You can go buy your six by four. You can go buy all your your tandem trailers, but you can't get one for a motorcycle. So, so are you going to be doing more of these through the through the? Um, look, that's yet to to be seen, but for the most part this is doing the trick. It's a, it's a difficult product to build, it's, there's a lot of engineering going into it with certain weight criteria and limitations. Yep. Not many vehicles can pull big loads, so there's a demand for big heavy trailers, but the reality is not a lot of people can actually pull them, so we have to be mindful of that and yep. build a product that is suitable for a greater market than just the, the odd handful of people with a big truck. Nice, I might get you to run, run us through it if you can, just we'll go for a wander through the caravan and, and show us what sort of yeah. features it's got. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, Nick, so this is the back of the workshop, so what sort of features do they have here? I noticed some beds on the side, are they easy to put down and pick up? And Yeah, it's easy, they're just a, a set of tilting bunks. Uh, right. We have people with two children, one child, four children, so we can customised to a certain degree. Right. We bring the bikes in, we've got enough tie down points to keep the Yeah, I know all these. It's yep. pretty well mounted and you've got the, we'll the just workbench. A little workbench there just for a bit of oil and, and rag and whatever if you want to do a bit of maintenance and a, a helmet holder up there so you can get the helmets up out of the way. If the customer wanted, could they go for, for two of those as an option as opposed to those two of them or of things, yeah, you can, you can, you can switch yeah. around yeah, and once you've got the nucleus in place yep. those things are just a, a bit of fluffing around the edges basically well, this is this is mum and mum and dad's domain in here we've got a queen bed that folds out out the front and a folding dining area we've got a nice big fridge to keep a few yeah, I noticed few the, drinks cold which I noticed is the fridge the most important yeah. thing in the motorcycles the fridge has got to be big enough yeah. that's a fully reverse cycle air conditioner system we've got flat screen television and Radio, CD, DVD, and importantly, we've got a shower and toilet in there for the girls. And um, Excellent. when the kids have been out on their dirt bikes and uh, all grubbied up, you can get them in there and tidy them up before you put them to bed. So. on the bike. Um, a lot of people come to these shows, there's a lot of people who have maybe never ridden before who have the aspiration to get on the bike and get going. There's people who also um, are feeling the pinch of rising fuel costs, uh, also the fact that they live quite far out from their work and maybe considering the option of actually commuting on a motorcycle. So I wanted to chat to Lenny today and um, you know just find it about find a bit about how we actually get going on the bike, what a training school such as Motorcycle Training WA can actually do for you to get you up proficient and safe on the motorbike. So it, you're taking people from scooter level right up to super, super bikes? Yep, yep. Uh... 
for the 15 and a half for the scooter riders. They, they take the test at 16. All right. We're actually there uh, taking them out on the road uh, so they're getting used to, because uh, we're teaching them from their first ever license, the first road rules. Um, it's not like somebody who's had a car license and knows what's happening on the road. Yes. We're trying to teach the scooter riders. From, from leaving the house to going from A to B and obviously riding safely and still set themselves up in the correct road position. All right. And obviously um, making sure that when they do get a green light, they know to give way to oncoming big and stuff like that. And you'd be surprised how many even people with cars do not give way to oncoming vehicles. <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't think I'd be too surprised about that. <laughs> yeah. um, so you take them to a very quiet place to begin with where there's no traffic? You don't get them out on the road? No, uh, first lesson we, we go, uh, we obviously make sure they can ride the bike, we go through the bike with them, scooter, it doesn't matter if it's 250 or not, go through the bike with them. Uh, we obviously make sure they can handle the bike, low speed control. Oh yes. And uh, obviously doing a bridge stop over 50k, which is part of the test as well. Okay. Um, we go through the road craft with them, where they should be positioned in the road. Um, also, the scooter riders, I make sure that I'm pretending I'm with a set of traffic lights and they're oncoming and different vehicles and things like that. And I'm saying, okay, who has got the right to go now, me or you? So and you, try and go through that. So you're aiming to get the, the riders thinking about what they're actually doing on the bike. So yeah. once you've got the comfortable out in a quiet spot, take them out on the road yeah. and yeah. get them really confident. Yeah, and because once once they are, they leave our tuition and they pass the test, we're trying to make sure that they're as safe as they can possibly be. Yes. Because, you know, we don't want them to be a statistic. Yeah.